What the what? If you wanna be crypto savvy, we can help you skip those valleys. Let's rally, yeah. If you wanna be crypto savvy, we can let investments rally. Oh yeah. Let's rally, We've got yeah. a lot to talk about in today's show, so buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. First things first, however, we did already kick out a video first thing this morning, so if you haven't caught that, why don't you check that out in the top right corner at some point in the day. Now, moving on, we've got Bitcoin on the daily time frame sitting at $30,100 at time of recording. Yes, you did hear that correct. We have broken through the $30,000 threshold, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. This played out uh, pretty much how we were anticipating broke through the $30,000 threshold, reached the top of our resistance band, and saw a slight pullback. If you are interested in what the channel's uh, expected outcome is over you know, the course of today, as well as over the next week or so, uh, that video that I mentioned actually is in the corner right meow. And go ahead and check that out. As far as today's video, this is going to be centered more around the genie.io range report. Wow! <laughs> it reminds me of like this abstract cat meme gif thing that I've seen around quite a bit. I don't know why. It just reminds me of that. Anyhow, let's jump into this genie.io range report. Let's start out by looking at some of the news and events. Uh, Bitcoin price faces bearish divergence amid 22,000 correction target. Bitcoin ordinals community debates fix after inscription validation bug. Bitcoin, not Ether, builds crypto market dominance ahead of Ethereum's Shanghai upgrade, which I do want to touch on the Bitcoin market dominance uh, later on into this video as well, so stay tuned for that. Bitcoin shorts take on 87% of futures liquidations as Bitcoin crosses $30,000. Uh, having a short squeeze uh, get uh, as part of, you know, the FOMO reaction into this Bitcoin price surge is a definite possibility and honestly a, a probable uh, outcome, to be honest with you. If we look down at the price ticker for Bitcoin, you can see that we are currently trading at $30,126 at the time of recording. Now looking at our squiggly uh, meme cat looking projection. Boy, I tell you though, this week looks like it's going to be exciting, isn't it? We've got a lot of news coming out. We've got the FOMC minutes report. We've got inflation. Inflation. Why do I keep saying inflation? Inflation uh, data coming out, as well as uh, uh, other reports as well. So it looks like we've got a volatile week, to say the least. Definitely is going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Hit that like button if you're looking forward to it as well. Uh, as far as the forecast is looking like, uh, we did get an update to where the upper echelon of the opportunity zone today is around $31,000. And the high today would be uh, close to $33,000. So if we looked back at our uh, trading zone or our trading view, sorry about that, uh, if we were in, in fact, to push and uh, pierce the bottom portion of our next resistance zone, uh, that would line up right where you know, right in between uh, where the the Genie.io range report would be predicting us as well. If we were to be on the high side of the prediction, mind you, uh, and throughout the rest of the week, it looks like we would uh, be expected to see a little bit of a pullback after. Uh, pushing up so much, which is typical. Once you push up that much, it is typical to see a slight pullback and then a retest, which it looks like we would be seeing later in the week, and a possible pullback and retest again. So it looks like uh, this is going to be a volatile week. I would definitely recommend jumping over to genie.io. If you Go down into the link. You can uh, use the referral link down there and grab this report for two weeks free of charge. It is only $20, and then you would also get 10% off thereafter using that code. But, I mean, come on. For two weeks free, and as volatile as this week is going to be, this is a great time to use this report and 
and just see how this could help with entry points, ex exit points, dollar cost averaging, in and out trading. For two week free trial, to me, it just seems like a no brainer. And for something as, as little as $20 and then also getting 10% off on that, it, I mean, it, it's, it, it pays for itself. So that's just me. The, the link is in the description. If it's something you're interested in, that's on you moving forward. We are not going to spend time on the candles or the RSI as we uh, kind of did that video earlier this morning. MACD as well. Uh, however, on the MACD pictured here, over 30 days, uh, we are still waiting for the cross. Whereas the MACD that we showed on our trading view earlier this morning, we were just experiencing the cross today. So this is something to keep an eye on. Uh, this is most likely going to cross. You can see on the stochastic RSI, we already had seen that cross uh, yesterday or two days ago, rather. Over on the average price, you can see that we are moving on up and Bitcoin on balance volume is also increasing as the price is increasing. Now, I've been telling you, we've been seeing this get stacked up on exchanges and it's only a matter of time. As soon as we get we get to the point where where these sharks and whales, these people with 100 Bitcoin, 1,000 Bitcoin, the ones that are stacking them up on exchanges and waiting to dump on the market, when they get to the price point they, they want, that's when all of this, this is all of a sudden going to dump and the price is going to go with it. Supply and demand is part of the game. So I've been talking about that and I just want to warn you. And this is also something that leads me to the belief that, uh, whoop, that, uh, we haven't seen the bottom of our bear market either because of the extremely low amount of whale wallets uh, out there. So we'll get into that later on though. Bitcoin average directional movement, we are at 31. So we do have the, uh, we do have a slight trend picked up and it looks like that's clearly to the upside as for now anyways. Ultimate oscillator, we finally got some movement. We've been sliding around 50 for a while now and just jumped up to 62 today. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. I got a frog in my throat today. Parabolic SAR, we got another printed buy dot. So we are still looking bullish as far as parabolic stop and reversal is concerned. Fibonacci retracement. We actually did a little Fibonacci uh, talk in the video this morning. So check that out if you want to see more there. Hikaki, we have still uh, seen only the bear confirmed uh, was the last one that we have seen. And the Kopak curve still bouncing around. Still bouncing around down on that zero line. Historical data, we uh, just slipped under 99, or I'm sorry, under 90% down to 88%. Still super solid though for any kind of an indicator. And we shall jump into Ethereum as well. Why not, right? We've got time. We've got the time. So do remember while I'm right here, that report that I mentioned, uh, Genie.io not only has Bitcoin and Ethereum, but the addition of several more top tier tokens is already in the works and soon to be released. Uh, I do know that they did kind of a sneak peek Easter egg uh, tweet. And I know Dogecoin was one of those. So something to look forward to. And jumping into Ethereum now. We actually didn't get a chance to check out Ethereum on TradingView on today's earlier video. So I want to jump into that real quick uh, just to uh, take a look at this. Uh, you can see we are kind of similar to Bitcoin. We are playing around with an expanding symmetrical triangle. Uh, we are still within the expanding symmetrical triangle on Ethereum. And we are and have been uh, testing that on the upper band here, uh, going back for the last couple weeks, uh, getting rejected, but finding our way back up without getting kicked all the way back down. You know, we can probably, this this might be a little bit early, but we can probably switch this to support. So let's assume that we have a support level here at about 1850. And basically what we're looking for is to continue up. 
and hopefully pierce through the top of the the uh, symmetrical triangle and uh, hopefully test that two thousand dollar level this white line is the two thousand dollar level here and the red is the beginning of uh, our resistance band personally I think uh, thinking of resistance levels as straight lines and not levels you know, ultimately ends up, you know, cutting off percentages of uh, your entries or exits. Uh, doing that, I think you have a better uh, understanding if you're looking at zones as resistance or support for that matter. So as far as Ethereum, that's kind of what we're looking for, uh, whether it's today or lagging behind uh, Bitcoin slightly. Uh, I am looking for Ethereum to make that push towards uh, the $2,000 level and then most likely uh, continue up and uh, try and make a push towards that $2,100 level. And if that does in fact happen, then the next level of resistance above that is uh, around $23, $2,350. So let's jump back over into the Genie.io range report and check out what the forecast has to say. The volatility forecast in the range report shows that uh, there's a likelihood of Ethereum testing its resistance level, just as Bitcoin should as well. Uh, Ethereum's resistance level is the $2,000 mark, where Bitcoin has already tested and is currently testing that $30,000 level. Uh, the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum is, it looks like the forecast shows a pullback after the test on Ethereum without as quick of a retest as you can see uh, it just kind of pulls back a little bit throughout the week versus uh, a quick retest uh, on the Bitcoin side if, if you remember on Bitcoin uh, it looks like after there is a small rejection we actually retest it with a pullback and another retest possible uh, all in the same week so that's the difference between the two here. Uh, we're going to move past the uh, hourly candles. However, the RSI, you can tell here, is uh, in the oversold area on the daily or the hourly RSI over seven days. Uh, that's probably why Ethereum does not have the strength to test more than one time because it's already been up into that oversold area as well as on the daily RSI over 30 days already very very high uh, 70 is the oversold mark and we're sitting at a 68 currently so that's probably the difference uh, between Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin's uh, weekly forecast and why Ethereum sh probably won't have another retest like Bitcoin uh, Ethereum just does not have the strength set up as Bitcoin does. Now, looking down at the MACD, you can see that we were looking at a uh, bearish cross and we got a little bit of a bounce. Uh, so this most likely will uh, separate slightly and then we'll probably end up seeing that cross within a matter of uh, a couple of days. On the stochastic, you can see we just saw the bullish cross. Uh, so we do have a short term bullish picture. However, you can see over the course of time, we are putting in lower highs and lower lows over on the Ethereum average price. Let's highlight this to get rid of the candles and we can see that we are in a overall bullish trend, putting in higher highs and higher lows. However, we are expecting to see a slight pullback in that bullish move. Looking down at the directional movement, we are picking up a very slight hint of a trend not much you know that's why we're not gonna re probably retest more than once according to the prediction uh, not much of a trend force pushing behind us ultimate oscillator is getting a little bit of a kick up as we reach 58 today sliding on down to the parabolic stop and reversal you can see that we did get a buy dot today we may possibly get a buy dot tomorrow. However, I would anticipate seeing that flip to uh, the dots going back above, which is a signal for sell. Uh, I would anticipate that happening either tomorrow or the following day. 
uh, just based on, uh, you know, really the RSI, the, the strength, uh, the strength of the trend. Um, I just don't anticipate that having enough push to uh, make that a strong confirm uh, SAR, which our, our confirms are three straight dots. What we look for for a stronger confirmation uh, as far as a parabolic SAR is concerned. Uh, we're not going to get into the Fibonacci retracement quite yet. Uh, once we do find our top, uh, we will focus more on that to look for a retracement zone. Not going to spend time on the Hikaki today. Kopak curve, uh, we got that bounce about a week and a half ago or so ago. And typically when you get a bounce with the Kopak curve, when you get a bounce off that zero line, whether it's from above or below, you're typically not going to come back up too high. Uh, so I would anticipate that as you know, another slight signal that this probably doesn't have too much further to go before uh, seeing that drop back down and most likely piercing the zero line, which would give us that indication to see a uh, price reversal for Ethereum in the future. Uh, so something to pay attention to over the course of this week as well. Uh, down in the historical, you can see that we are knocking out an 88% accuracy over the past seven days on Ethereum as well. So super solid there. And I think that's about going to do it for today's video. If you got anything of substance, make sure you smash that like button. Throw some comments down there, folks. Let's have a conversation about what's going on. As far as this video, though, we're going to cut it right here. And we'll catch you folks on the next video. See ya.